you want to create a digital e-invite for your wedding. You can do this on a platform called Canva and I'm going to show you how to create a e-invite using one of their templates, personalize it, animate it so you've got some movement going through it and ultimately how to send it. So if you're looking for more just one of those steps, I will put the timestamps in the description box below so you can jump right ahead. To start things off, you will need to open up Canva and go to the What Will You Design Today. Whilst you're loading that up, I'll show you what we're working towards. So here's one I did earlier. And so as you can see, it's digital, it's moving, it's gonna have two pages, so it slides between the two. I'll put that transition in for you. And the RSVP QR code. So there's lots of different elements there. So this is what we're working towards, but all the principles that I'm talking about today really can be basically applied to any of the other templates that you choose. So that's all transferable skills. What about transferable skills? Hopefully now you have got the what will you design today page up. Typed in something like digital wedding evites, I think. So as you can see, lots of beautiful templates come up when you search for that. You can pick any of these. What I'm talking about today will apply to any of those things, as I've said. This is the one we're gonna pick. So if you wanna search specifically for it in case you can't find it, it's Screen Premium Digital Invitation Wedding Instagram Post Portrait. That's just being specific to the dimensions. You can change the dimensions, but you don't need to. So we are gonna hit customize this template. Right now, all of this is static. None of the images move, none of the text moves. It's just really this one page and what you see. What you can see over here is that I have obviously changed colors. I've added an additional page, added a QR code, um, and I have animated many of these elements, including putting a transition between those two pages as you saw before. We'll go step by step how to do that. So we're gonna start with the most basic thing, which is obviously updating the text to what you need. This is assuming you're gonna follow a similar format, but I say change apply as necessary. So I am gonna click on the names box. I'm gonna double click to highlight the names just to delete them. And for today we're gonna to be Will and Alice. Okay, I'm gonna leave the date as is because this is a fictitious wedding in my world. Let's change the address, let's, why not? So you see, it's kind of pushed it automatically into a second line, it's crowded it up. I actually don't want this on this page, I'm gonna create a second page. You could click and drag around to relocate it if you wanna keep it on this page, that's how you would do it. Um, I don't want it on here, so you can either click on it and hit the little bin icon. I'm just gonna tap delete on my keyboard and get rid of it entirely. So that made a bit of space, I'm gonna move this down by clicking and dragging. I wanted to add an extra word in here, you could do that by typing it in here, hit enter. I don't want this, again, just gonna hit delete. I'm now gonna mess with color. So again, coming back to Will and Alice, I'm double clicking to highlight all the text. Coming up to the top where there's a little A with a colored bar underneath, that's got the current color. I want to go to a gold. So I'm gonna type in gold, see what it comes up with. I like this one. So I'm simply gonna select that, it'll change it for you and hey presto. So let's start with the fun animations. The first thing I'm gonna do is take these designs in the corner. As you can see when you hover over them, they're all individual boxes. I'm going to do them all at once. So as you can see, we've highlighted one of them. I'm now gonna hold down the shift key on my keyboard to select the rest. So I'm just holding that down and clicking all four. As you see, they're now highlighted. I'm gonna come up to the top where it says animate, click that, and we're going to scroll all the way down to where it says flicker because I just think it's a twinkly star image that would be quite a fun animation so we're going to select that you can adjust the speed of all most of your animations so the flicker in this case so going to the left will slow it down and going to the right will speed it up I'm going to make it relatively slow that's it, that's the one I've, I'm choosing for this today. You can click through all of these, play around, see what you like. At this point, I think I'm going to make a copy of this page ready for this. I'm doing it now because I want that same animation to carry over onto this page, but not the other ones I'm gonna do. So to save me having to like do and undo things, we're gonna make the copy now. So 
I'm not just gonna hit add page, don't do this, because it will only bring your backdrop across. So don't do that. Come up to the top right here where you can see it says duplicate page and hit that instead. Now you've got a full copy of everything you've done on that first page. So we'll leave that sitting there for a minute, hop back up to the first page. All right, so what should we do next? Let's mess around with the text. Selecting the item, text box, whatever it is on your screen that you're wanting to animate again. So we've selected it. You don't need to highlight the text, just select the box, come up to the top, hit animate again. And this time we're gonna come down and I'm gonna choose spread. So you can see it just elongates the letters, but it goes quite wide currently. So once I've hit it, I then get other options. So I only want this to do it on enter. So if you choose both, it will then also do it as it disappears as well, which because we're transitioning between two slides, I don't want it to do. So just on enter. And so on this one, unlike with the last animation, instead of adjusting speed, you're adjusting the spread. I am gonna slide it quite far over to the left because I don't really want it to exceed the white backdrop that we've got. You can make it go the other way, contract it. Fun to play around with. I'm gonna keep mine going out. Next, I am going to animate this background. So I thought it would be fun if those sort of floor images would sort of expand behind them. So doing it with you, select the item you want to animate. You've probably already got the animation left open from before, that's great. This one, I'm coming down to where it says breathe. You see that's the default motion that it will do. And I'm pretty happy with that one. But again, you can adjust the scale, whether it goes in like it contracts or it expands but again i want that kind of growth coming in from behind so we've got this first page looking really pretty nice introductory capture your guests attention get them excited for your wedding and so now we need to move on to our second page which we handily already created and let's also move down over here let's make these adjustments so for page two I don't need this anymore. So as before, just selecting the box, hit and delete, it's gone. I don't need this anymore. Select, hit delete. I want to maintain this style of um, text and the font for the kindly RSVP bit. So make sure all the text is highlighted. You do that by clicking and dragging your cursor over all the text. And then I'm gonna simply type over the top of it, kindly RSVP by the 30th of September. September 2025. And I want this in a font size 40. So you can adjust the font size up here at the top. And I'm going to select that, change it to 40, hit enter, and as you can see, it grew. You can resize the text box so it's all on one line as I've got it over here by clicking these little columns on the side and dragging until it all comes up. Then again, to move it, I'm just going to drag around. Actually, I also need to drag this out of the way. Um, I'm actually going to make my two versions the same size so you can see the scale is the same. Okay, so to move these, I'm going to click over here, drag my mouse over all the elements that I want to take with me. So you see it's highlighted everything that I want to take. And now I can click on that and do a little dance, move it around. Great. Drop it wherever you like. And going up here, you'll see this central line that appears down the middle of your screen. That lets you know that you've found the center point. So I'm gonna drop that up there. Same principle, click, drag. We're gonna finish up with the animations before I add in the QR code, just so I'm not jumping around too much. What we're gonna do here is animate, again, some more text. So I want to animate this RSVP deadline because Make sure people are RSVP on time is important and key. So firstly, don't forget to put the RSVP deadline on your invitation. Don't know how many times that gets forgotten, so do do that. Um, but yes, let's kind of make this stand out and then we're going to use the animate for this. And I'm going to choose burst this time. So as you can see, that's how that one works. I've got on enter, I'm going to lower the speed so that people can kind of read it more as it's kind of written out. Um, otherwise it all happens a bit fast. It'll be a bit fast anyway, but obviously people can come back to it, rewatch it, so it's all fine, but just so it's not too frantic. And so if you wanna see what we've got so far, 
you can come up to where it says preview at the top right and it'll show you what you created so far so you can make any tweaks or adjustments or think oh I forgot to do that okay and that's where we've got to so right now we still need a transition between those two slides because as you will have noticed it jumps quite harshly between the two things right now that could just be me being a perfectionist. You don't need to put one in. As, as you can see, it will transition between the two automatically anyway. But I wanna put transition in and a QR code. There is one more thing I did over here with the bouquet where I've sort of layered it differently so that it sort of sits on top for an extra dynamic. Let me know if you want a tutorial on another video on how to do that. It's not really for today's is getting into other territory outside of animation and and creating the video e invite but yeah if you want to know how to do that let me know okay let's do the qr code and i will do the transition between the slides as the last thing so qr code is a really cool way for your guests to rsvp to your wedding be right redirected to more information about your wedding so they can give you you their menu preferences all these kind of things. It's also a good idea usually to maybe also include um, a more traditional or just alternative way to reply in case people aren't too kind of tech savvy, but presumably if they can receive the digital invitation, hopefully they'll be able to do this. So let's insert one. So over on the left hand pane over here, I do this by coming to elements, second one down on the left click in the search bar and I typed in QR code generator. So when I did that at the top here, it brought up this gray box where it says, add a URL and we'll create a QR code for you to add to your design. So people can scan the QR code to reach your URL. So you type in whatever yours is. I'm just gonna put in my website so we can create one. You can obviously play around with these options as well. I've not altered those, but there's another great option for you there. Hit generate code and it drops it into your document over there. I'm just gonna hide this pane for space. As with everything else, you can click, drag, roll it around. So pop it wherever you want it. Again, that central line will appear to tell you where the center of the page is, really helpful. So as you can see, we are now pretty close to my original. The only thing left to do is create that transition between the two pages. So I'm gonna come down here to where it says grid view in the bottom right, click that, you will see all the pages you've got. You can add infinite pages and you can put transitions between them in exactly the same way that I'm about to show you now. It'll work no matter how many pages you've got or how many times you've duplicated the page, it's fine. So when you hover over these pages, you will see three dots in the top right hand corner. I'm gonna hit that and you see it brings up a bunch of options and all the way down here in this bottom section, you see it says add transition. So we're gonna hit that. So you can mess around and hover over them to see what you like. It will give you a preview of what each of them do. So on my original over here, because as you can see, I've now brought this up, you can see I picked flow. So I am gonna pick flow again. You can change the direction of that flow. like so. I picked the upward flow so it feels like when you're kind of scrolling through the phone, you're almost kind of scrolling onto the next page. I'm slowing down that transition just so it doesn't happen too, again, frantically. It gives you chances of viewer to like absorb what you're seeing. But again, it's not a problem. They can rewatch it as many times as they want. It's not going to disappear on them. Okay, and so that's now in. You can come out. So, I'm gonna hit preview again so you can watch this, but what I wanna say while you're watching this is that you can change the length of time each of these screens is on display for, not just the transition or the speed of the animations. So if you feel like yours is going by too quickly, you can adjust the time by hitting edit timing, as you can see in the middle at the top here. You can slide that around. You can make it much longer, slower, you probably want it at a speed where they've got enough time to sort of absorb what they're seeing on the screen and it transitions to the next without them trying to like manually get it to the next page. And then you can apply that to both pages if you want or you can do it individually 
to each page. If you want to do it individually, you just scroll down to the next page, make sure this page is highlighted and do the same process. All you need to do now is send it. So how do you get it out of Canva? You come over to the top right hand corner where it says share. You will get many options. One way to go is to choose this public view link. So basically you can then share this link with all of your guests and they will receive that link. So they don't have to have a Canva account. They don't have like log into anything. They won't see all this kind of setup screen that you've created. So if we do that, I will just quickly show you and add a bonus, but this is only available on Canva Pro, which is identified by this little crown icon. Um, you can switch on and notify me when accessed so you know when your guests have had a look. So you can copy that, it's copied to my clipboard. Let me just show you when I hit, when I copy that in, what they will see. So this will come up, they'll be able to hit play. So just hopping back to where we were, so that is one route to go. I typically just like to hit download, then I can just attach it as a file on an email, I can airdrop it to my phone if I want to send it as a text, all these kind of things. So as default here, it will give you MP4. So that is video format, so you will keep all your transitions in the video. You can use this slider to adjust the quality of the video, so you can get up to basically 4K. Just bear in mind it's the file size that you're sending. So this will still be very adequate. Maybe try downloading it in a few different qualities, seeing if you can really tell the difference on your phone screen. It is really just getting that balance between quality and file size when sending. And you want it to do both pages. You can just select one page if you're not wanting to do everything that you've made and messed around with on your file, but I want both. Um, you can download the separate files. We don't want to do that, we want them to just download pages one to two, so it will download it as one file. So you will keep that transition, it will just be one loop. And hit download, and there you have it. So that's everything you need to know about how to customize, animate, and send your digital wedding evite to your big day. If you've got any questions, do leave them in the comments box below. And if you do want more information on things like how to create the layering effect with that bouquet that I mentioned, or how to now resize this invitation so it's a more mobile friendly format size, the one you've got will still come up, it will still look great. But if you want one in a more mobile friendly size, that can be done too. Canva is an amazing tool. This is not an ad. I just really like the Canva platform. But say, got any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will do my best to help you out. But otherwise, of course, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss more content like this and that like button if you liked it.